right, it's kind of dark, but okay. So we're doing a home improvement project in my house, and I looked up like cheap flooring. I was on YouTube, like, what can I do? Because I have so many floors in this house that like need refurbishing, old rugs that have been pulled up, and all this. And so I ran into a video that said paper bag flooring, paper bag flooring. So that's what I'm doing in my daughter's room. I'm doing it in the bathroom. I'm doing it in the hallway. I'm doing it in my dining room. I'm doing it in my kitchen. I'm doing it all over my house because like it's a cheap alternative to hardwood floors and they last for years. And like from what I heard, they last for years. And that's what I want. And if you want to put a throw rug, an area rug, or anything else on it, that's fine. But the underneath my floors in my house are old like this house is built in 1920 something and the floors underneath are like old and scaggy so yeah this is my first project I'm doing and I hope to vlog it as much as I can because I'm doing the work so I might have to like get my daughter to videotape or whatever so hubby is over here having good times and tearing a paper right now. My room has boxes all over the place, deliveries. Look, my room is a freaking mess. And right now has boxes and deliveries and plants and rugs and because I want to hook my house up. And so there's a bucket of paper balls that we are cutting up right now out of you can actually buy this paper it's called builders paper and it's actually what they use to put on floors and like paint and like cover flooring with but i'm going to be covering the floor with it all right Alright, so this is what the floor looks like. The before shot. It is quite titious. This was under the rug. I just pulled up tack strips and staples and all of the nastiness and scraped as much as I could off of the floor. So I'm gonna get started. I'm not liking the consistency. I think I put a little too much water. Even though that is kind of creamy. I'm going to add a little more glue. Here you can see that I've unfolded some of the balls of paper me and hubby did earlier. And the more crumpled they are, the more definition your floor is going to have. Like when I stain this, you're going to be able to see all the nooks and crannies. And it's going to make it look really beautiful so what i'm doing now is really trying to find some end pieces um that have straight edges so that i can start against the um wall base see right here so you want to start against the wall base and of course you want to work your way out of the room so mm. and don't worry if you work it i mean you can't hurt it so what i'm doing now is just trying to find some straight edges to go like this here to go against the wall and then I will fill them in with this here so let me just demonstrate a couple of little thingies I want to I'm going to recommend you get four inch brushes which are the big thick you want four inch long brushes my husband went and got seven inch wide which is yeah so we're going to dip our brush in the thingy thingy with the glue. Look at that. And then we're going to stroke the paper. And then I'm going to lay it down. Oops. 
Oh wow. Well. And get the straight edges and put it underneath the baseboard. And this is the floor the next day. The glue has dried. And I mean, it is dry. And it's very sturdy. Like, I was scared I was going to put holes in it or it was going to be real flimsy. And there's Chompers, the mutt. Or it was going to be um, so easy to walk on it, put holes in it or whatever. No, it is really like uh, scratch proof just with Elmer's glue and water and as you can see some of the stains from the floor seep through but I'm not even worried about that because the next step is to stain the floor and since she has the pink and black thing hi Gabby <laughs> So she has the pink and black theme. I let her choose a chalk, her chalkboard paint and her pink. Well, she has to go over some spots. I think her moving furniture out, she messed up some of her paint, but it's all good. She can just go over it and do the baseboards and stuff over. Um, but yeah, these stains here that came through the floor overnight is going to be fine because I'm putting a black stain over top so that she have a black floor and her pink walls and it goes with the whole theme of her room. Seriously, dog? Seriously? Um, yeah, and as you see, his nail scraping against the glue and nothing. <laughs> We can simply walk on it and I was really nervous like it's gonna be so flimsy or it's gonna have holes in it no it really doesn't and all these so when you see like the wrinkles in there and then now you see why you crinkle the paper up so that you get these little veins in there and give it some character all these little veins are the crinkles of why you balled it up in the first place All right, so the next step I'm gonna do on the floor is I'm using this stain by Minwax called Poly Shades, and it's actually a stain and a polyurethane in one, and it's quite dark. That's why I really it was a toss up between this and an espresso, but she wants a pink and black room, so I still want to be able to see the grain underneath. So I'm hoping. Ugh, it's stained and doesn't paint but we shall see I'm about to do it now I'm nervous because I don't want these little greens to go away I think it adds character y'all doing this with me for the first time oh my god it's so dark
That's how I want it. That's what I'm going to do. A thin layer of it. And then I'm going <clears> to <throat> put layers of polyurethane over it. Yes. It almost scared me. It almost did. Okay, so this is my first time doing this, so I'm gonna help you guys out. When I'm using this sponge brush, to get in the groove of these, you're gonna have to pat and then swipe so that you can keep the integrity of the pattern. Um, it's like too much light, but I did get pictures. When I'm doing like, in spaces like this where it's bumped up, I'm patting the stain on, and then I'm trying to keep it the same direction, which is a back and forth direction. Because I'm going to do one more coat of stain, and then I'm going to um, use polyurethane. And done. The first coat of staining. And it came out super nice. As you can see, you still see the definition of the paper. The top coat of the polyurethane. So I'm going to wait till this dry. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a second coat of stain because I don't want it too dark. I think I want it just like this. And my next coat will be polyurethane. I think that's what I'm going to do. But look at that. It came out so nice. Okay, so I did decide to put a second coat on of the stain. As you can see here, the shiny part, and then this is the dry part that I didn't um, get to yet. And you can see the difference. But um, I waited three hours, and then I applied the second coat of stain. And it's looking black, but when I flashed the camera, it looks like stained hardwood. <laughs> and a dark brown seriously but I like it either way this her room scheme is pink and black it's going to look beautiful and plus she has like a zebra um, print coming in here with curtains and rugs and things so this floor is just going to look gorgeous and it's going to last a long time so I will show you when I'm done with the second coat completely. Also with the second coat, what I'm doing is an up and down pattern. Well, and then I'm going into my normal pattern so I can cover more of the um, floor, but also the spots that have nothing. So I'm going up and down. And then I'm going across. And the last and final step is polyurethane for floors this is minwag super fast drying clear gloss and hubby is going to help me and we have our <laughs> our lightsabers which are brushes duct taped to the end of a stick so it's easier for us to uh maneuver 
Yes. Um, but so far, this is what the floor, this the floor looks like. Um, it's kind of a dreary day today in Philly. As you can see out there. And then we have a big tree blocking our light. But, um, I'll take pictures of it before the polyurethane. We're going to put, uh, three or four coats of polyurethane, I think, every two hours. And then that means it'll be eight hours past, um, with four coats. And we'll be done with this floor. I'm doing my hallway, my dining room, my kitchen, my bedroom. I'm doing all the floors except for my living room, which is going to have carpet um, this way. It's just going to be different stain colors. Um, I think I'm going to keep it natural in the kitchen because it matches my woodwork. And that is the polyurethane. You better not pour it. Baby, don't do it for the vine. All right, don't pour it though. So thin. That's why I told you to get bigger brushes too. Now you see what I mean. It's gonna be a whole lot of dipping. 